สวัสดีครับ and good afternoon once again today is Wednesday the 21st of July 2021 and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing here at the CCSA so firstly uh, thank you to Dr. p i s a m a i as always for the Thai language version um, One t- a couple of points she raised just now, which was important, is that um, in the past uh, few days we had had, had meetings with the uh, local media, the local Thai media, which is very important because they are the ones who are actually in touch with the public, which uh, of course, uh, be, uh, as per their duty, in conveying uh, information to the public. So we had a very good discussion with them, the CSA and the uh, local media uh, leaders, in various. Uh, Modes, uh, both a television and a newspaper, as well as well as online media. So we thank them for their support. Another issue, which was mentioned by Dr. p i s a m a i and shown on screen, uh, was actually a graph uh, that had was color coded. Um, it was color coded in terms of uh, red, yellow, green, and then light green. Uh, that actually showed. The level of severity of each of the patients that were infected with COVID in Thailand. Now the graph had red and yellow for those with severe symptoms. Red, of course, being the most severe, and yellow being severe. While green and light green were those with mild symptoms, as well as those with no symptoms at all. Now this graph, the red and the yellow. Uh, part of the graph were, was not that high, but the trend, according to our analysis, is that this will be increasing. The red and yellow will be increasing. The authorities have taken this into account in terms of preparing for the number of beds and expanding the capacity of the various um, isolation centers and hospital beds. Uh, each district will be equipped with these sort of facilities. So this is being developed as we speak. I'd like to start off now with the vaccination progress that we have. An update on the vaccination that have been administered since the start of our national vaccine drive in February, and of course uh, nationwide in the month of June. So yesterday we inoculated 257,000 uh, doses. Of vaccines, uh, increasing the accumulated number of total of uh, vaccines to 14.8 million doses now. So 14.8 million doses in Thailand now. You see that on screen, and that's uh, separated by first and second dose. Now, one piece of information which was uh, very uh, delightful was that. Of course, the assistance from various countries. The U.S. Embassy announced yesterday about the donation of 1.5 million Pfizer dose, doses to Thailand, uh, worth 30 million U.S. dollars. And the U.S. Charge d Affairs said that the U.S. and Thailand have been, of course, uh, close allies, friends for 200 years, and the U.S. is committed to helping the Thai people in staying safe and healthy. And in this regard. We express our sincere appreciation to the United States and the Embassy in Bangkok for this gesture of goodwill, and this will be, of course, put into our vaccination distribution plan. In terms of the general situation that we have for today, we have 13,002 cases of con- new confirmed cases for today, out of which 1,049 are. Inmates uh, within prisons. So you see that on screen we have, at the moment, active cases, cases still being treated in hospitals and centers. That amounts to 131,411. For new recoveries, we have 8,248. For new fatalities recorded today, we have 108, making the Fatality rate now standing at 0.82 percent, and cumulative number of fatalities at 3,610. As you know, we have been reaching over 10,000 for a couple of days now. 10,000 new cases per day. Today is 13,000. There have been new uh, increases in new confirmed cases in Bangkok, in the several other provinces as well, especially. Now in the northeastern uh, Isan region, and over 50% of the overall cases nationwide are concentrated now in Bangkok and surrounding areas. 
I'd like to talk a little bit about the tightening of measures further in terms of Phuket that might be of interest to the English language audience here. Now, the Phuket province has updated its travel screening measures pursuant to the Phuket Provincial Order number 4021-2564, now requiring all travelers, both Thai and foreign, traveling from other provinces in Thailand to provide a negative test result of COVID-19 by RT-PCR or rapid antigen test, not exceeding seven days before the date of travel. Such tests may be done at a certified medical facility with proper certificate of examination. The order is effective from the 20th of July yesterday, yesterday and the details of the measures are spelled out here on screen in this infographic for your attention. Now to recap the requirements, those residing in the other 76 provinces, uh, not outside Phuket, who wish to travel to the province of Phuket must be able to meet uh, the requirements. Having, uh, first having to, must have to receive the prescribed uh, dosage of vaccination. That means two doses of Sinovac or Sinopharm, one dose of AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer, and John or Johnson & Johnson in the last 14 days prior to arriving in Phuket, or they must have fully recovered from COVID for no more than 90 days. They must also provide the, a negative test result for COVID-19 by RT-PCR or rapid antigen test not more than seven days before traveling to Phuket and download the required application and agree to turn on the location sharing function. Also, another important piece of information about traveling to Phuket during this time is that all types of land transport passing through the Chai checkpoint are not allowed to enter Phuket between 2300 to 0400 hours. Dr. Apisamai just now mentioned a little bit about the antigen test kits, ATK. The rapid spread of COVID has led to increasing demand for tests, resulting in people having to wait long queues for the RT-PCR tests. So in response, the Food and Drug Administration of Thailand approved and registered four antigen COVID-19 test kits, antigen test kits, or in short, ATK, for home use. These ATK will be available for purchase at pharmacies or drugstores with uh, in-house pharmacists, as well as hospital staff to advise on how to properly use and dispose of these test kits. This will help reduce the overcrowding in various testing centers and assist authorities with active testing, early detection, and uh, to take subsequent appropriate measures in case of positive results. So in case of positive results, individuals should enter into immediate isolation and have their tests confirmed by the RT-PCR tests. And of course, the public, uh, when it is available, they are strongly advised to purchase only test kits that are approved by the Food and Drug Administration of Thailand. On the antigen test kits, in addition, the ATK, authorities have been conducting door-to-door -door missions uh, for the past week already to test to use these ATKs. Yesterday, the 20th of July, a total of 383, that was only for one day, were tested doing ATK. And in the period of the 15th to the 20th of July, just an as an example, one week, a total of 1,874 persons had been tested with ATK. So this is one of the missions that had been starting with the, through the CCRT or the Comprehensive COVID Response Team, the fast acting team that I had mentioned, that we had mentioned a few days ago. Now these teams that went door to door to conduct these ATK tests and they have reached 139 locations and communities, uh, 139 uh, areas visited already. And of course that will expand in due course. Now, yesterday you may have heard about the <laughs> vaccination uh, scheme for foreign nationals aged uh, 60 and over. I'd like to start off first by saying that we try our best 
to provide vaccines to all that live on Thai soil. That is our policy. And you may have known many foreign nationals here may have had already had their vaccinations. Some may have, some may have not. So some of these schemes include, for example, in the various provinces. Many provinces around the country had schemes and they had been vaccinating foreign nationals. For example, in Chiang Mai, in Phuket, in Ho Hin, and other uh, cities or provinces. So that is one scheme for foreign nationals that had been happening already. Another scheme is, of course, the, the organizational vaccination, various organizations, uh, institutions, or associations which had had access to vaccines. They had been vaccinating uh, their foreign staff as well, or in terms of the schools or universities and the like. So that's another scheme. And of course, through the Ministry of Public Health, they had the thailandintervac.com uh, website, registration website, uh, which led the registrants to the registration at private hospitals that were arranged to vaccinate foreign nationals. So that's another scheme. Of course, this is ongoing. They have to, we have to try to cover all groups, all groups of foreign nationals uh, as well, and meaning all groups of foreign nationals uh, who reside in different areas of the country, who work in different uh, places, in different organizations, in different age groups and the like. So we're still continuing with these many schemes. So that's, I hope you would understand that why we have schemes to cover the uh, widest possible um, group of uh, groups of, of foreigners that we have. Now, the latest one you may have known that we had uh, announced uh, and then it was covered in media uh, from yesterday onwards was the vaccination at the Central Vaccination Center at Bang Su Grand Station in Bangkok. Now, for some people who have been vaccinated already through different schemes, that's very good. Now, there were some, of course, who have not been, uh, have received this access yet. So we made it clear that at Bang Su Grand Station, this would be open to, for vaccination of foreign nationals aged 60 and over. So this is a collaboration between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Public Health to confirm, to make sure that Bang Su Grand Station, the central vaccination center, would be able to receive vaccination of foreign nationals age 60 and over. This was confirmed and this was announced since yesterday. So since yesterday, I'll talk about the 60 plus group first. Since yesterday, we announced that the foreign residents age 60 plus residing in Bangkok and neighboring provinces. Nakhon Patom, Non Taburi, Patum Thani, Samut Prakan, and Samut Sakhon. So it's for those in the Bangkok area. So 60 plus foreign nationals in the Bangkok and the surrounding provinces area who have never received uh, the vaccination can register for the first dose by filling, filling in an online form. This online form, of course, developed jointly by MFA and MOPH, and the QR code appears on screen. Uh, this vaccination for foreign nationals 60 plus in the Bangkok and surrounding areas will take place at the Central Vaccination Center, Bang Su Grand Station, a lot of details here also that to enter through gate two, bring your passports and proof of residence, like a visa permanent residence cards or work permits. And registered individuals will be notified uh, of appointment details directly from the center via SMS or email. Now, um, from what I know is that the appointment date is not far from the registration date. So for 60 plus, age 60 plus foreign nationals, if you register today, it'll take just a few, a couple of days until your appointment is made. It is expected to accommodate around 300 registered individuals a day. And the first batch will begin receiving the vaccination uh, this coming Thursday. So for those who have been informed of this scheme for 60 plus, uh, age 60 plus foreign nationals in Thailand, if you registered yesterday, for example, which was Tuesday, the appointment is now on Thursday already. So it's quite fast. And, and as of today, around 9 a.m., around 627 foreign nationals age 60 plus have already registered for this program and their appointment dates to be informed. But for foreign residents residing in other provinces, kindly contact your provincial health authorities or your provincial hospitals through the various other schemes. So this is for those residing in Bangkok area. Now this 60 plus service is implemented in parallel with the 70 plus 
sorry, 75 year old plus age group. Now the slight difference is that foreign nationals in the Bangkok and surrounding provinces area who are aged 75 years or older can just walk in uh, to the central vaccination center at Bangsu Grand Station. And this scheme is also organized by MFA and MOPH likewise. So the slight difference is that 60 plus uh, you register, 75 plus you can just walk in to the Bangsu vaccination center for those residing in the Bangkok and surrounding provinces. Uh, so this uh, 75 plus group started a few, uh, two days ago as well and a handful of individuals had their first, first dose when they walked in on Monday and an additional number will also be uh, walking uh, in, had, had walked in already, sorry, uh, yesterday and the day before. Dr. Apisamai also talked about uh, certain clarifications regarding the closure of venues, particularly for the dark red zone in the Bangkok area. That the CCSA had further clarified these uh, measures, the closure of venues. The following venues uh, may be, would be closed for the time being, uh, pursuant to announcement number 28. Uh, golf vet courses, golf driving ranges, hair salons, and barber shops. As for venues that may remain open out of the necessity to provide basic services to the general public, uh, nurseries in hospitals, overnight care uh, services, el elderly homes with overnight care services, uh, these can remain open, as well as specific sections of markets selling food and cooking ingredients for consumption. These can remain open. And of course, provincial announcements, each province has their own uh, separate regulation, uh, will be issued to this effect in due course. So basically, that's the summary I have for the English language audience for today. The, to confirm, to reiterate, that the Royal Thai government and concerned authorities remain committed in doing their utmost to implement the necessary public health measures including the vaccination rollout plan programs that, so that the general public are well guarded against health risks associated with COVID-19. As you can see, vaccination for foreign nationals has had uh, progress, uh, various uh, schemes in, in terms of uh, location-wise, in terms of uh, which province you're in, which uh, organization you work for, organizational arranged uh, vaccination as well as uh, through uh, by age group, by age group as well. And rest assured that we will continue to develop this plan. By early August, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Public Health will also be developing um, another portal to for the registration of, uh, for vaccination of foreign nationals who are not uh, 60 plus, for who are uh, younger than 60 plus, meaning the general the general population of foreign nationals. Of course, these schemes are for those, so we can uh, leave no one behind. Uh, these are for those who have not been vaccinated uh, yet, who have missed out on the various schemes, and we'll try to cover everybody for those who uh, did not have the vaccination uh, available to them yet. Now, just uh, to end, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit uh, home isolation. For those who are in home isolation but not contacted yet by health authorities or the uh, newly infected uh, COVID patients who need to enter home isolation, uh, we have something on screen for you for your benefit, uh, courtesy of NBT World. Um, there is a some information there and also a QR code as appears on screen. So you can avail of uh, the information from this QR code. And this, of course, will be available on the social media platforms of the CCSA or on the uh, Facebook page of NBT World as well. Yes, so this is what I have for today. I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, with that, I wish you good health. For, and also enjoy the rest of the week. Most of us are working from home, obviously, uh, trying to be 100% working from home. 
and uh, I hope uh, to see you again on Friday for the next summary briefing. Thank you and สวัสดีครับกลับขอบพระคุณค่ะท่านนัทพนุโนพระคุณรองอธิบดีกรมสารนิเทศและรองโฆษกกระทรวงการต่างประเทศค่ะ